Good morning. You're invited to participate in the morning worship service of First United Methodist Church in downtown Fort Worth, Texas. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. Welcome to worship. I hope you're ready for that. We are a little, uh, we are a little excited. I'll tell, I told the first service, I said, um, if you see some straight faces up there, they're a little bit nervous, and I know you're a little bit nervous, and so we'll all be nervous together, but I'll tell you, after the first service, um, I am proud. Um, they did a fantastic job, and so we hope that you um, will get to experience um, exactly what 9.30 did. This is one of those times when it was good to wake up early, I think. So hopefully 11 o'clock is not going to miss a thing. We are so privileged to be a part of a church where Dr. Brewster and the clergy give us a chance to come and share worship with you. Um, it's great to sit in that balcony um, every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. But it's great to be here and for you to let us um, take a moment to share and be in leadership during worship as well. We've had a lot of great events and activities going on this summer. You're going to get to hear about some of them, um, but know that the youth are doing fantastic things, building their discipleship through mission and ministry and service. And uh, I give thanks and praise that we have a church that allows us to do that um, and encourages us to do that um, and finds new ways for us to, to be the people that God has called us to be. Let me tell you just a little bit. I didn't say this in 930, so I'm going to let you know. Um, the band that's playing, the oldest person in the band is 18. Um, it, I, I just bought a new stereo for my car, and I can honestly say I have trouble playing the radio. I can't flip channels and do all that now. Going down the highway, I get honked at quite a bit. Um, so I didn't have any leadership in that. They've trained themselves. They've taught themselves. They've put all of it together. Um, and so you should be very proud of that as well. Also, I will uh, share one thing. Uh, toward the end of the service, there's a song called Fearless. Uh, Clint Church, who's singing the song, wrote that song as well. So it's a kind of a chance for you to hear uh, a little bit about his personal faith as well. Again, we're really glad you're here. We hope that your life will be enhanced and uh, you will experience God's grace and peace um, this day as you see the th great things that God is doing in the lives of these students. Let us continue with worship. Will you stand and sing with us?
seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you also. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Welcome to Youth Ministries Sunday 2005. We're glad you're here and worship with us, and if you're visiting, hope you can join us again soon. There are several announcements that I'd like to draw your attention to. Um, today begins the sign-ups for short and long-term Bible studies. Hope you all can make it. They are great opportunities to meet new members of the church and to grow in your faith. Um, next Sunday, we'll be recognizing teachers and educators, so hope everyone can make it to show their support. Um, there are several other announcements in your bulletin that I would like to draw your attention to, so take a minute to look at that. And again, thank you for being with us, and hope you continue your support for our youth. Thank you. building uh, just because it talks about how God is the source of all our happiness and not um, I mean we can have all these other things and possessions and everything but when we get down to it God is where all our true happiness can come from and that's what this song is about so it's called the answer
Good morning. Good morning. I'm Molly McNair. I will be a senior at Arlington Heights High School, and I'm going to talk about day camp. Uh, a few days ago, I got a call from Clint asking me if I wanted to speak today about my experiences at day camp, and I immediately was like, oh, I got to do this. So I thought and thought, and I finally decided on what I wanted to talk about. Um, for the past few years, I got to be the teacher of camp skills, and so we got to teach the kids how to tie knots and how to build tents, but that wasn't the only thing they learned. They also learned how to use teamwork and listen to people and work together. And not only did the kids learn all that stuff, but so did the counselors. So, um, during, throughout the week, we, ha we asked the kids where they saw God, and they would say, oh, we saw God in the plants, we saw God in the trees, in the lake, so, but they weren't the only ones that had a lot of fun, because I think that day camp was actually made for the counselors to have fun, because that's what we did after they left. Well, not that we didn't have it during the day, but we also had it afterwards, too. <laughs> but. In the evenings, we did a lot of fun stuff. We had a dive-in movie in the pool with a big screen all set up. And we got boats, and we got to go out on the lake. And there were a few bad moments, like when Kelly decided she wanted to go ditch diving in the middle of the night. And so that wasn't a plus. But we still had a really great time. But most of all, the best part that I enjoyed the most was in the evenings, Sean did devotionals. And we, we had the band play in the pavilion. And it was at nighttime. And it was very, very beautiful. So and no one, no one at all felt left out. Everyone felt a part of the group. It was definitely something I want to do again. And so at the end of the week, and I was thinking about where I saw God, and I ended up seeing God in my friends, in the adults, and especially the kids. Good morning. Oh, y'all don't have to do that. <laughs> my name is Reagan Dixon, and I am a senior at Martin High School, way over there in Arlington. Over the summer, I participated in quite a few youth trips and activities, although not as many as I would have liked to due to my vigorous baseball schedule. What I did get to participate in was Vacation Bible School, or VBS for short. Now, if you've ever worked VBS, you know the name is deceitful because it's not a vacation. VBS is much inclined to teaching kids ranging from pre-K to sixth grade about God and God's love for everyone. It does this through songs, which by the way are quite catchy, skits and crafts. Every day, God made his presence felt. Whether it was the energy he gave the counselors and the teachers every morning to sing and dance, or in the form of my second graders playing a game of movie Oki. One theme was consistent through the week of VBS, and that was to keep God in your thoughts, because God loves you, and there will always be a place for you in God's Circle G Ranch. One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious wonder of your majesty and on your wondrous works. 
The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. Please stand. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church. Seek justice and resist evil. To obey Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. seated. Hi, I'm Coulter and I'm going to the eighth grade at Fort Worth Academy and I'm here to talk about the junior high mission trip. This year's junior high mission trip we went to Sweetwater, Texas. The van ride was long but with our company of our friends in there it was short. We got there in the afternoon and went to the First United Methodist Church in Sweetwater. First it was kind of rowdy and fun. The next day when we got to work it was serious. We had good times, bad times, sad times, a couple injuries, a few trips to the hospital, but nothing big. <laughs> we all found things that are really important in everybody's life, like trust, friends, love, and God. I think everybody found God all there, but we all found him whenever we did our good deed and we felt the warmth inside us. Everybody works so hard and it feels, it gives you a warm part in your heart. And whenever you do that, it makes you want to do it again. And I think that's what the mission trip's all about. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Michael Purcell. I'm going to be a junior at Trinity Valley School. And I'm going to be talking about the senior high mission trip to Pensacola, Florida where we did roof repairs and other miscellaneous construction projects to try and rebuild what Hurricane Ivan had destroyed. Like most other mission trips, this one started with a very long van drive. I can distinctly remember being very cramped and close to other people. Through the day-long van ride, there were fights, there were naps, jokes were told, Games were played, songs were sung, serious discussions took, pl took place, arguments were started and ended, apologies were made, and every single person's patience was tested. But when we stepped out of those vans at the end of the day, we were still glad to be with each other. For the duration of the trip, we stayed at St. Sylvester's, 
the Catholic rectory, which was not made to house the 56 people on the trip. The quarters were very tight, and you were always, very, you were always close to another person. At the end of a work day, after everybody had showered and had come back for the evening, people would pile up into two or three different rooms to talk and to laugh. Sometimes there would be as many as 15 to 20 people in a normal sized room. This leads me to where I found God in the trip, in the faces of the youth who were so close, spatially, spiritually, and emotionally. One particular Bible verse that sticks out in my mind is Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. That pretty much sums up where I saw God in the closeness, in the friendships, in all the youth that were gathered very tightly in God's name to do God's work. people who delight in things and possessions. Sometimes we begin to believe that what we can see and hear and touch, the things that are temporary, are all we really need. Help us realize, O oh God, that you are eternal. Let us realize that you have given us the freedom to live a life for a cause so much bigger and better than the temporary. We are free to live a life with compassion, love, and hope, just like Jesus did. For you have given us your love and you have set us free. We thank you today, O oh God, and we pray these things in the name of your Son, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. My name is Kevin Keithley. I recently graduated from Hill School of Fort Worth, and I will be a freshman at Texas Wesleyan University. The youth choir toured to England and was titled Wonderful World. For many of us, it was an experience of a lifetime to journey to the United Kingdom to represent our church through music. We sang at Cambridge University, York Minster Cathedral, John Wesley's birthplace at Epworth, two Methodist churches, one at York and the other at Chandler's Ford and Thornton Hall, which was attended by well over 300 people. 
During our time there, we also saw the Greenwich Royal Observatory, Big Ben, the York Dungeon, went on a local ghost tour, visited Stonehenge, the HMS Victory, and the HMS Mary Rose, which was used by Henry VIII in Portsmouth. We stayed in dormitories at the London School of Economics, Cambridge, York for three nights, Nottingham, and three nights with the English host families at Chandler's Fort. We consider this trip to be a mission because of recent events in London, and we were honored to provide a bridge between our two nations. This was my final year in the youth choir, so I was glad to conclude my career with an international tour. The youth choir appreciates all the adults who came on tour with us, the host families, our, our families for sending us, the church in general for praying for us, and the planning from Gordon McMillan of Lubbock, and our British guide, James Brown. It was a privilege to go on tour with Mark Burroughs, the director of the youth choir for 10 years. He's more than a director because he's outstanding and he made being a part of the choir so much fun for many youth. He has handed the reins to Aaron Medina and we graduates wish him well. We also wish to thank Janice Rathburn and Sarah Davis for their special contributions. This was a wonderful experience and we were thankful for the opportunity to go. Good morning, I'm Sam Schroner and I'm going to be a junior at Weatherford High School. On June 11th, 14 youth and three adults from our congregation set off for a town called Rock Sound on Eleuthera, an island in the Bahamas. Over the next seven days, our lives would change. We grew closer as a group, gained appreciation for things we often take for granted, and walked a little farther on our journey of faith. We slept on a boat called the Bahama Star. It was tiny, smelly, cramped, and wonderful. <laughs> Dramamine was taken daily. Often, rather than share a bed below deck, we chose to sleep on the deck, under the stars. As there were no showers on board, we took joy baths instead. This consisted of one jumping into the ocean, lathering up with joy dishwashing detergent, and rinsing. <laughs> While in Rock Sound, we re-roofed two houses, taking off the old roofs and putting on new plywood, tar paper, and shingles. The work was hard but fun. Often a camp song could be heard, as well as phrases like, what time is it, or get her done, coming from the somewhat eccentric but undeniably enthusiastic Captain Bruce. During the week, we met many amazing people. Captain Bruce was one of them. He was not only excited working on the roof, but also at 6 a.m. when he liked to wake us up by imitating livestock. <laughs> Other people included Brother Penn, a taxi driver in Nassau who showed up before dawn to take us to the airport, a man named Mark and his wife Maggie who were trying to start youth programs on the island. My favorite was a man named Jim, and he is one of the most incredible people I've ever met. Jim was the owner of the second house we worked on, probably in his early 60s. He was on the roof all day with us. When a huge sore appeared on his hand, he said he couldn't even feel it. He was so excited to be working. On the way to taking a load to the dump with a couple of guys, Jim pointed to a school of fish in the water. He was a fisherman, and he could have made thousands of dollars that day, but he gave it up so that he could help us. His dedication to provide his family with a new roof was an inspiration to us all. I saw, it, I saw God in many ways during the week. He was present during evening worship on the dock, in the beautiful waters of the Caribbean, and in the people who welcomed us like dear friends rather than strangers. This is my plane ticket from the trip. On the back, it reads, this portion of the ticket should be retained as evidence of your journey. Rather than use the word trip or vacation, it says journey, which made me think. I hope this ticket isn't the only evidence that Samantha Schroner visited the Bahamas in June 2005. Rather, I hope that evidence of my journey can be found on the faces of people whose homes we repaired, in the things that I appreciate now that I've always taken for granted, in new friendships and a deeper faith. Thank you. Hi, I'm Courtney Mays. I'm going to be a sophomore at Country Day next year, and I'm reading from John, chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, 
We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place in there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The word of the Lord. Taylor Pugh and I'm a senior at Arlington Heights and I just wanted to tell you a little about a little bit about the next song we're going to sing. It's called Free and it's probably one of my favorite songs. Um, what I love about it is that it really kind of relates to the story of my high school life. Um, if you read the lyrics you'll really understand. Um, but it's funny because I find myself singing it in the shower or at school, walking up, down, walking up and down the hallways or in my car. But every time I think about it or sing it, it always helps me realize that no matter how much pain or fear that I experience, that God will always be there to help me through. And that even in the most stressful times in life, he will be there to calm my nerves. And it's a really awesome song with a very powerful message. So we hope you enjoy it. My name is Meg Brandon and I recently graduated from Colleyville Heritage High School. This Thursday I am leaving Texas to go to the University of Oklahoma. But one of my first journeys was right here. The first time I ever came to this Methodist church, my mother and father carried me in since I was just weeks old. The first time I came to this sanctuary, it was to be baptized at this very altar. 
I am so glad that I had this wonderful church to grow up in. When I went through confirmation in 2000, each confirmand partnered with an adult member who became their faith friend to help them through confirmation. My faith friend, Mrs. Ellen Rogers, wrote me a letter the week I was to be confirmed. In it, she told me that I was very lucky to have a family that brought me to church. At the time, the words were nice, but they did not really mean very much. But as I am leaving for college, I realized that what she said was true. This church has had an amazing influence for good, not only in my life, but in the lives of so many others. Former First Lady Hillary Clinton told us that it takes a village to raise a child. There has never been more evidence of that than within this church. First United Methodist Church has been my village. So many of you have been important to my upbringing and to the upbringing of others like me. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. This church is one where the little children are welcome, and many have volunteered to help learn about the kingdom of heaven. I will never forget Mrs. Cynthia McElrath, also known as the church lady, talking my friends and I into going back to Sunday school while we were rebellious in middle school. I think she caught us in the pretty ladies' room on the first floor. <laughs> she taught me that even though there are times I don't want to do things in the long run, I will be glad that I did, and she was right. Then there is Mrs. Carol Harrell, who as a greeter in Epworth says hi to every single person who walks in the youth building every single Sunday. She may not know how much that means to all of us, but every person feels welcome into the church. She has taught me that by simply acknowledging someone, you can brighten his or her day. Both of these women have loved each and every child to pass through the children and youth programs. Although it may seem simple, they are living the way that God hopes we all will. Just as surely as Bible verses can teach us, members of this church can teach about God's love for us by example and the way we live. Through my years of Sunday school and vacation Bible school, the people of this church had made sure my classmates and I knew all the stories of the Bible. Noah's Ark, Moses, the fishes and the loaves. Some of their teachings made sure I remember what it is to be a Methodist. For instance, I still have not forgotten all the hymns that the Catchings taught us in fourth grade Sunday school. I'm still grateful I don't have to hum out of tune to all the hymns thanks to their hard work. I'm so glad that I was a good neighbor's kid, as the children of my parents' Sunday school class are called. Because I was a good neighbor's kid, I got to attend many pool parties, parades, and the occasional after Sunday lunch. My parents' friends have always been there for me, encouraging, helping, and putting their faith in me to do my best, truly loving others as they do themselves. What a great foundation. I have established so many friendships that I can only hope will be lifelong. Some of my best friends I have known all my life, and they come from this church. I hope we have all learned from examples found in our church family, our roles as adults. It is through members of this church that I have learned my responsibilities now that I am closer to becoming an adult. The Sunday school teachers, the youth counselors, and adult friends have taught me how to live through their good works. As in Matthew 5:16, let your light shine before men, and they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. That they have done. An old Greek proverb states, a civilization flourishes when people plant trees under whose shade they will never sit. For generations, this congregation has done that not only for me, but for my friends and family, and will continue to do so in the future for children yet to be born. 1 Corinthians verse 13 says, So faith, hope, love remain these three, but the greatest of these is love. In First United Methodist of Fort Worth, I have found so many people have had faith in me. Not only that, they have taught me to have faith in others and in God. I have learned from this congregation and from Bible lessons taught over the years to never be without hope. Hope in people, hope for the best, hope for the future. But what I have received most from this church is unconditional love. This precious gift will remain close to my heart every day of my life. From the wonderful examples I see among the faces out there today, I have learned that love is to share with others in both small and large ways. I can only pray that in the future I will find a church as loving and open as this one is. Thank you to every youth counselor. After a bad day, I will sometimes call one of them for a few uplifting words. They have shared every joy and every pain that I have been through. Thank you to every minister, Sunday school teacher, and friend. Your love has not gone unnoticed or unappreciated. There are a hundred more people I need to thank for being part of my village and teaching me how to live in this village. I cannot wait to see you all again at Thanksgiving when I return. God bless. Hello, I'm Andrew Schelecti. I just graduated from Keller High School, and I will be headed to the business school at the University of Texas in Austin in three or four weeks. I'm very excited for this opportunity to speak with you all, and I'm honored to be chosen to do so. 
Um, I'm going to discuss the freedom this church and youth program has given me through my walk in faith and my appreciation for it. I was fortunate enough to be able to go on the mission trip to the, to the Bahamas that was spoken of earlier. And honestly, the day I got home from that trip, I talked about it nonstop, so I thought I'd go ahead and talk about it some more today. There I had many life-altering experiences, but I'm going to share one specific story about Jim, the, uh, the man Sam spoke of a little bit. On our third day on the island, we'd already finished roofing the first house, so we started a second. When we arrived at the work site early in the morning, there was one man already on top of the roof starting to strip the old shingles and nails off. We quickly got on the roof ourselves to begin working and met the man, Jim, who we found out was the homeowner. All morning we shoveled and pried loose nails, shingles, and tar paper off with shovels and the backs of hammers. It was probably the hardest work of the whole trip. I remember myself getting pretty tired and thinking about taking a break, but I watched Jim put 100% effort the whole time and I kept on working myself. After the old roof was completely taken off, Jim offered to use his pickup to take loads of shingles to the dump. Before I knew it, I was volunteered in the small purple Nissan truck, which barely ran, with a man named Jim, who I'd only met hours beforehand. On the ride, he showed me a blister on the palm of his hand, probably the size of a tennis ball. I asked him if it hurt, and he said, sure, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I looked at him with a puzzled look, but all he could do was keep telling me how incredibly happy and pleased he was for the new roof and his life in general. The blister almost seemed as a payment for the grace of God, in Jim's point of view. On the rest of the way to the dump, Jim informed me of his life, his family, his house, his job, and his culture. Overall, the one-on-one -on -one experience with Jim was truly one of a kind and can never be duplicated. Not only do I want to share with you and enlighten you to the events that happen on a youth mission trip, but I also want to point out how incredibly important and necessary the church is and has been in my life. Without the youth program, I would not have had the unique life-altering experiences I've had. I can remember the 14-hour sail to the town of Rock Sound. We all anxiously thought of what lay ahead, truly not knowing what to expect. I had never dreamed of getting into a small truck with a six-year-old Bahamian who I had just met hours beforehand. The story of the kidnapping of the girl in Aruba was all over the news the weeks before we left, but yet my faith enabled me to feel safe and even excited for the car ride with Jim. Actually, the, the whole environment in the Bahamas is quite amazing. I've never interacted with nicer, more genuine people. Every time we walked down the street, we would either wave, receive a honk of the horn, or even engage in a lengthy conversation with whomever we crossed. When we, when we came back to Texas, I made a pact with myself to be nicer to strangers. After sitting on the receiving end of such incredibly polite gestures, I felt obligated to bring some of that positive attitude home, where people, including myself, are not, are not necessarily overly nice to strangers. My faith and just my growth as a person has matured greatly over these experiences this, this, summer, this summer and all of my years in the youth program. I've learned the benefits of the freedom to choose, to take chances, and just to live your life. God has given us the opportunity to help others, to feel safe and protected, and to live our lives to the fullest extent. When I come back from mission trips, nine of them to be exact, I always go through the same feelings and emotions. I've always been tired, closer with my friends, and had an overall good feeling inside about helping others. But over the last few trips, my feelings have changed some. After this last trip to, Pen to Pensacola, Florida, I was driving the work to work the next day back at home. All of a sudden, I became overwhelmed with a sense of inadequacy. In my mind, I thought, just 24 hours ago, I was roofing someone's house who really needed the help. And now I'm, working, now I'm going to work at a sign shop to make banners for real estate companies and the burger place down the street. The two activities just don't compare. What I've come to realize as I've grown older is that this feeling of inadequacy is healthy. Perhaps as I'm starting to look more towards my future, I wonder if my life is meaningful enough and has enough purpose. I've since come to the conclusion to always keep service and faith a basis for my life. As long as I can keep that solid base, I believe I will feel driven and adequate. It hurts me that there are other youth in the world who don't have the opportunities or experiences in reaching out to others. But then it also brings me to be grateful for my church and specifically the youth program. Without the youth program, I honestly don't know where my life would be. Families just don't pack up and go roof houses for summer vacation. And the guys from school don't meet up to discuss the Bible. The church is truly something truly unique and something to be celebrated. Personally, I would conceive myself to be somewhat liberal, incoming college student who openly doubts his faith and his faith in general. I will admit I'm fairly analytical, and I know that part of me comes into conflict with my faith. What I love about our church is the fact that this doubt is okay. As a child, I was taught the Bible stories, prayers, and hymns. Through my early years in youth, I learned the traditions and foundations of the Methodist Church. 
and as an older youth, I've been encouraged to share and discuss my opinions with others. My faith has been built upon the experiences and beliefs of others. There is no cookie-cutter student in our youth ministry. I can sit at a table at Wednesday night Bible study and hear Clint present one argument and Scott share a differing opinion. But, when I, but then I get to choose to take one or the other or even blend the two together to form my own opinions and beliefs. Even with Sean, our youth director, I've never gotten the feeling that what he says goes and everything else is wrong. Everyone, of course, respects his teachings, but no one is forced to agree. I've always been somewhat insecure with my faith. It was always there inside of me, but I questioned whether it was enough. Recently, through the help of my peers and counselors in the youth program entirely, I've come to accept my faith. My church is my foundation. It truly has set me free. Free from worry, envy, and denial. Free to dance, free to sing, free to love, free to live, free to give, and free to smile. Will you please play with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our church and our youth program. We are thankful for the opportunity to serve as the next generation of church leaders. May we continuously act like unrestricted servants of you and be set free to serve, grow, and live in your name. Amen.
Heavenly Father, may these gifts go out into the world in your name. Amen. This last song is the uh, hymn of invitation. Dr. Brewster's here and we'll greet you if you would like to um, come to the front and join the uh, church community during this time. Like I said, this church has meant a lot to me and I encourage anybody that would like to, to uh, maybe get an opportunity to share the same experiences. that Powell Jones has brought his parents forward this morning. <laughs> he will actually be an official part of our church family in December when they bring him to have him baptized. But this is Allison and Jess Jones. They come from uh, the United Methodist Church as well as another denomination, and we're delighted to have them. I've got a mic here. We do welcome you. We're so glad to have you as part of this community of faith. And I ask you, do you reaffirm your faith in Christ? And will you be loyal to the church and uphold it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Welcome. So glad to have you. We also had another member join, uh, Sherry Sabota, uh, joined earlier this week. And uh, you'll want to watch for her... Um, a picture in the church newspaper and take an opportunity as you meet her to welcome her. This morning we learned a lot about what it means to go and be God's people in the world, didn't we? In a powerful way as our youth shared their faith and as they shared their experience of, of uh, experiencing God in the other. As Jesus said, when you do it to the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you have done it to me. And what a great blessing uh, you all have been for us today. Sometimes people say the youth 
are the uh, future of the church. I say the youth are the present of the church and the future of the church as they minister and serve and work uh, in the name of Christ today. And thank you so much. We love all of you and are proud of you. And to Sean and his staff and your leadership, Sean, we appreciate you so much. I'm going to invite the Joneses to stay up here so you can come by and give them a warm First Church welcome and have an opportunity as well uh, to uh, greet uh, these students that have blessed us today and have led us in worship. Our gathering will soon be ended. Where will we go and what will we do? May grace, peace, hope, love, and joy forever accompany you. Amen.